This is the Chamignon 4.5 F2 version. Um, it is a 5x4 field camera. It's one of the later models, um, hence the black and also all of the spirit levels you can see around the camera. Uh, the focusing is done by this small focus wheel at the back here uh, and also by changing the lens mount on the front standard here um, which goes from 90mm all the way up to about 300mm. Um, I have at the moment a 90mm and a hundred, uh, 210 sorry. Um, so I tend to have it quite close or quite far away. Um, but I am looking to get a standard 150mm as well um, because I, I just prefer it having all three than have the versatility to do quite a few things. What I love about this camera compared to other 5x4 cameras, um, I used to have an Intrepid uh, and as much as you know, it was very portable, um, it was you know, just a bit of wood, could fit in your bag, you could take it anywhere. Um, but the ground glass was not great. <laughs> um, the Chamignon is Chinese made um, and the ground glass is incredibly, incredibly bright. Um, even focusing with F8 on my 90mm lens, I still have so much, you know, so much visibility through the back of it, um, which is what really drew me to this in the first place. Um, they're not the most simple cameras to use um, there's quite a lot of movements so you can um, be able to tilt the back standard here which you don't get on that many cameras nowadays um, but what i love about it is also these spirit levels there's spirit levels situated on the back standard and the front standard um, as well as underneath here um, and when combined with a tripod head that also has spirit levels um, you have so much control over your horizons, uh, your verticals, your horizontals, um, and that has been a big thing for me using a large format um, to really try and hone my skills on is trying to get those verticals, those horizontals right, um, because that is what, you know, for me that's what I see in a photograph first, is the horizon or the horizontals and the verticals in it. Movements on this camera, you have the front rise and front fall. Um, which is made incredibly easy by the two little white dots that you can see here. Um, and what is fantastic about that is a lot of cameras, the Deerdorf 8x10 I used to use, um, had, you know, when you were raising and falling it, um, to set it to zero, um, you'd have to sort of guess it with the little things on the side. But with this, it's got these really useful two little white dots that you just have to line up and you're all set to zero, you're ready to go. As well as that, you have the tilt, front standard tilt, um, which is made incredibly easy, again, um, by the magnets they've got in it. They've got two little magnets um, that basically allow you to either do a really big movement here, like that, or tiny little smaller ones. Um, and you use these to lock them. Uh, and <laughs> because it's a new camera, it has this. Um, a lot of the older cameras, a lot of the older field cameras, especially monorail cameras, um, they don't have these clever little things, you know, these little magnets that allow you to just lock it into position and it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, it makes for focusing and doing movements so much easier because when you're looking through and you're behind the camera, all you wanna do is you wanna lock it forward and then you can just very slowly move it back and forth um, and it just gives you complete control over your image. What is also great about this camera um, is that you're able to move the standards with these two little levers here. Um, it can go as far back to compensate for a 300mm right up close, I think about two or three feet um, and it can go as close to compensate for a 90 mil. What this means is not only have the versatility of using one lens up close and you know quite far away, is that what I found, especially with uh, the 210, is I'm able to lock my lens board into the middle one. 
and just use these to focus. It gives me more room to focus on one plane um, before I start doing smaller movements. Um, I normally lock it back and it's, again, it's got these three little dots along the side here, um, little white dots that you can just lock into place and tighten these. And that, again, allows for quite a lot of precision when doing some movements with the camera. The camera comes standard with a uh, ground, glass, ground glass protector screen, um, which I think is, is really, really important. Um, the Intrepid didn't have one, which it wasn't too bad because it's, there's not, it's not particularly bright ground glass. Um, and it was it got knocked about a bit more, which you know was my fault. But having this little screen here just to protect it, um, and it quite easily just slides on and off with these little grooves here, like that this little thing. Um, changing it from uh, landscape to portrait is very easy and very secure as well which is always a bonus <laughs> when you're shooting large format. I've had times where I've changed it and one of the little levels is loose especially in the deer dove because it was an older camera um, and it was a bit stiffer. You have to lock it into place with your thumbs. That, that wasn't ideal. Um, with the chamignon you just lift these two little notches up here and take it off like this. Um, you can see how well this is made. Um, the quality of material they use is fantastic. It's all um, super polished wood. Uh, this, I believe, is red oak. I think that's the name of it. Um, and everything is also handmade, so you're really getting you know, extreme quality for what it is. Um, the bellows, if you can see, this is, I believe, I think this is about five years old, this model. Um, the bellows are very easily replaceable. Chamignon sells them on their website. Um, so if anything would happen to them, very easy to get, which unlike a lot of older cameras, um, trying to find bellows and replacement parts can be a bit of a ball leg. Um, but, you know, there's different colours to choose from and you can have um, leather bellows. These are just the like paper card ones I'm not quite sure what the actual material is called but uh, they are fantastic the front here uh, is bagged at the front and the classic better design at the back which means that you have so much more maneuverability when you're doing your tilts and your rising and your falls um, especially with a longer lens like a 210 um, with a 90 mil not so much because you're limited to the movements by what lens you have on also on the back of the camera are four little notches just like when you change the lens at the front. These are really really useful if you're worried about your dark slide slipping out. The back two lock the dark slide in into place which means that you're not able to open this very much. You undo those you're able to open it enough to put your dark slide in and you undo the first two it opens even more. Uh, I like to, if especially if it's a long exposure, lock these back to when the dark slide's in there so that even if I wanted to get in there, I couldn't and it's completely locked shut, um, which is another great safety feature. So putting the ground glass back on, all you need to do is clip it into here and make sure these notches are pressed down. Uh, I find that really, really easy to do. Um, it's simple just to flip these up and down. Obviously, you've got to make sure that they're secure before they go in, but unlike other ones like the Deerdorf or the Intrepid where you have to twist, um, this is so much easier. Uh, the ground glass is super, super bright, as I said. Um, when using like an F and stopping down to F5.6 uh, on a 210 or 150, you can <laughs> see so clearly. Um, I made portraits in the dark earlier with my dad um, and it, I thought it'd be really hard to see, especially because I was using the 90mm as well, which only stops down to f8. Um, but because of how bright it was with uh, the Fresnel screen, I think this one has it on. Um, I'm not sure though. Yes, it does. They, I think they come standard with the Fresnel screen. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think so. Um, and so focusing is just made so much easier. That was a real worry of mine when I got into large format was 
I heard about all the focusing issues and um, how hard it was sometimes, but since using the chamignon, I haven't had a problem with it. Um, and it, it actually, it makes me want to make more work with this camera. Um, using 35mm, digital, some medium formats, the screen has always been super bright. Um, and visibility is you know, one of the most important aspects in photography. So when I came to using the Intrepid, which was my first 5.4 camera, uh, I, I struggled a bit, I definitely did. Um, and it took a lot of getting used to the brightness and I'd have to schedule, you know, what time of day I'd have to shoot things at. Whereas now I'm a bit more flexible. I sort of just follow my own feelings. You know, I'm going to go and shoot at, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon or, you know, five o'clock in the evening when it starts to get a bit darker, which it is now. Um, but because of how bright the screen is, um, I haven't had a problem with it. And I can't praise that enough. That is the one thing that really drew me to this camera. Changing lenses uh, on this camera couldn't be easier. Like the rest of the camera, um, there's a few little things that just make it that much sweeter. So this is my 210 uh, Nikon Schneider lens. Um, fantastic lens, uh, stops all the way down to f5.6. Uh, it's a telephoto, so it's absolutely fantastic for portraits. Um, and the guy who sold it to me, uh, he had only used it three or four times in a studio. So it's in absolute mint condition. Um, and I'm super, super happy with it. It's the lens I use the most. Haven't got 150 at the moment, but looking to get one. Um, but even then this, because I'm making a lot of portraits at the moment, this is absolutely perfect. Uh, and it's, I believe it's also wide angle for eight by 10. So if I do ever get into eight by 10, <laughs> which I hope to, I hope I can do in the future, it makes for a fantastic wide angle lens as well. Um, but yeah, so replacing the lens or changing the lens with it, there's two little, I don't know what you call them, notches up here, um, two little wheels that trigger these little tiny grooves. And you just slot your lens in, bottom first. Uh, and when it's slotted in, you just push these grooves and it locks it in with these two little plates here. and. That, doing that is, is super quick. Uh, again, coming back to the Deardorff I used, and talk about this in comparison with the Deardorff or the Intrepid um, or an, an Ebony as well, which I've used. I think it is probably the easiest camera I've ever used, but because of the amount of movements, it also is quite complicated. Um, the Deardorff was quite big and stiff uh, and it was old and there was a few things on it that didn't didn't quite work with me very well. Um, whereas this is super user friendly. Um, and the Intrepid, it was too simple for me. If I was wanting to get into more complicated things, um, but it was great, it's a great starting camera. Anyone who's looking to get into large format, uh, I highly suggest uh, looking into Intrepid, um, especially the Intrepid 8x10 as well. Um, but yeah, so changing lenses, super simple. So as part of this video, I'd also show what I take out with me when I'm shooting with the Chamonix. Um, firstly, start with this, which is what the camera comes in. Um, it is this fantastic little bag uh, with a handle um, that the camera really easily slots into. Um, it is super, super compact. Um, you can see next to my hand, it's really not very big when it's packed up. Uh, and that fits in there perfectly. Uh, and this bag will be attached uh, with a carabiner clip to the strap on, which means I don't have to carry it around. It just hangs from me, which is very secure, even though it may not sound like it. Um, my next thing is obviously a dust blower, um, just in case dust gets onto the lens or anything like that. Normally carry with me a micro, ah, here we go, here it is, uh, a cloth to help just clean the lenses if I really need to, um, but I avoid doing this as, as much as possible. Um, the next things are my lenses. Um, they came in these fantastic um, lens wraps, uh, which I haven't seen before, um, but I absolutely love. It just protects them both and fits perfectly. Uh, so this is my 90mm lens. 
Suji 990 mil. Uh, all stops all the way down to F8, all the way up to F45. Uh, great for landscapes and other sort of tight situations, really. Um, I've been in quite a few places with buildings and things um, and architecture, which is fantastic for this. And my 210, which you've already seen, which fits in here again perfectly. Next is this case with two uh, cable releases in. Uh, I always carry two, have my main one here, um, which is uh, specifically for large format lenses, this one, uh, with a timed trigger here so that it stays open, if I get it to work. Uh, and just a normal bulb one. Uh, and I always carry a spare with me, sometimes even two spares, uh, just in case, because I have had some horrible experiences with uh, cable releases and I really do not want history to repeat itself when I'm out making photos. Next up is the newest addition to my camera gear. And I have been searching for year and a half for a good priced Siconic spot meter. This is the L508 Zoom Master uh, and I have been wanting one of these for so long and I fi it finally came up on eBay. Um, mint condition, absolutely no problems for, I think it was about 200 quid, um, which when you look at some of the prices of them from Japan and things, they're well upwards of 350, 400 pounds and I was not willing to pay that. So when this came up, I... <laughs> I snatched it up um, and I made the majority of my photographs with just an ambient Siconic meter, which is this thing here. Uh, but when I got the spot meter, the spot meter is fantastic for when you're out making landscape photos and you can't quite get to the lighting or the exposure or the zone um, that you want to photograph. And this, this is just great for it. Um, you just flick it to the spot metering um, and look through it, if you can see very well, look through there and press the metering button and it gives you a meter, um, which is fantastic. is isn't necessary to have. Um, the ambient meter did me absolutely fine for the majority of my picture making time. Uh, the spot meter is just a really nice add-on. The next thing is a very simple uh, four times loop. Uh, I've used eight times and six times before and it doesn't really matter as long as you have a loop with you. Uh, it's also really handy to have a little bit of string attached to it so that it clips around your neck and you can also get attachments with uh, a white diffuser and also a black diffuser. Um, super important tool to use. So the next thing is my dark cloth uh, and I've got a couple of dark cloths. I've got this one here which is just a bit of literally a bit of dark cloth <laughs> um, and I used to use it but not 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 so much anymore not since this one uh, and this one is great because it's elasticated so it slots round the camera um, you've got to be careful of pulling back the bellows and um, not the bellows the back standard um, I've done that a couple of times when you're a bit too firm with it um, but it's velcroed so it opens up um, which is great uh, and it's just a better alternative than just a little bit of crappy dark cloth. So the next thing is the dark slides. Um, with the Chamignon you get two of these, so there's another one behind me. Um, and they are these great little holders for it, uh, which is great if you're, you know, if you're tight for space and things, which my bag fits every all of this absolutely perfectly with a little bit of space to the spare. Um, but these are just fantastic and the dark slides are some of the best dark slides I've ever used. Um, they're handmade wooden ones, um, I've got filming them at the moment. Um, they're handmade wooden ones uh, with little grooves here and I like to have the um, black facing out which tells me that it's dark so it needs to be kept dark more. Um, which means that it's unexposed. Everyone has their own different ways. Um, doesn't really matter how you do it, but that's how I remember it. Um, the borders you get on this are really, really thin, which is something I haven't seen before. I've got Toyo dark slides and the borders are normal, but this, you can see the gradient of the groove here 
if you if you shot five four ten eight you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, this is very, very shallow, which means that the border around is quite thin, um, which makes for cropping, editing, uh, and just the general overall feel of the negative is quite nice. Uh, it's got little stickers on the inside, um, so you can label it. I've labeled them one, two, three, four, and then another one, which is five, six. Um, and yeah, they are fantastic. I can't, <laughs> can't praise them enough, really. Um, really, really good in between of being a good, strong, stiff dark slide, but also loose so that you're able to pull the dark slide out. Um, yeah. And, and just to show an example of the other one, um, I've got three in here with labels everywhere, um, with some Toyo dark slides in. These are completely empty. Um, but be careful when you pull them out if you put too many together. Um, so, and it comes out really, really easily. Um, and it's all non-slip as well, which is fantastic. I, I'm a bit of a butt finger, so things slip out of my hand, but this just fits in so smoothly. Just slip it in like that. The last couple of things are by no means essential at all. Um, I've got some post-it notes and a Sharpie um, for, you know, labeling things. I don't do it very often, but just in case. Um, and probably one of my most useful things, um, this isn't just, you know, just for photography, I use it for other things, but um, I call it my field notes, but um, it's got all my scanning things in, um, just loads of, you know, chamignon notes and stuff, and, you know, more stuff like that, and travel plans. <laughs> um, but in here, if you, you know, I don't normally, because I normally shoot everything the same, but there has been times where I have had a dark slide that I've shot and I wanted to push a bit more, push or pull, um, or something's gone wrong, um, or you know I've got some empty ones that I don't quite realise are empty. I'm very very forgetful, so having a notepad, note and a pen and all those things are useful when you're out in the field if something goes wrong. Um, just makes me feel more prepared. So thanks for watching this little review, this little tour of um, the Chamignon 4.5. This is the F2 model um, comes. There's lots of different models, different makes, different sizes, um, but this is the standard and also the most advanced one. Um, and I cannot praise it highly enough. It's helped me to hone my skills, also explore new things, different ways of working. Um, and it's a camera that I plan to have for life and use for life. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.